In this tutorial, we are going to create um, a chord progression using an LFO, which is being quantized using the quantizer and being fed into a feedback delay, uh, which uh, creates a, um, an overlay of the plate uh, uh, sounds, which are monophonic, in order to let them appear more like a, a polyphonic chord. So please open up um, uh, example number six, generative delay space. Bring the patch to you. Um, just realized there is no VCA for volume control, so I put down the volume um, that you can hear me clearly. So what we have here is um, we have an oscillator here, a sine oscillator, which receives um, pitch information on the exponential um, FM input from this LFO, slowly triangle evolving, which is being quantized to minor, to a minor scale, um, scaled up a couple of semitones. And then this is creating the, um, um, the sound sequence here. Um, maybe listen to it for a second. Okay, and um, this is being um, um, am uh, amplitude uh, modulated by um, this randomly triggered um, AD envelope generator, um, which is being fed into the volume amplitude um, input. And uh, then in the end, the output is being fed into this delay object here, um, which is uh, creating this the feedback, the repetitions, the echoes, if you if you will, um, of the sound, which layers the monophonic sequence on top of each other. Okay, then let's have a closer look at the single modules. So I take a scope and um, I put this very down here. I mute the scope and um, place the this the signal here into the scope i reduce the sample rate like so so that we can see this is the triangle wave triangle slowly evolving going up and down and you can see the stepping here which means these this is the quantization to the steps of the keyboard for a minor scale um, and this is constantly running so basically it's it's stepping through um, the scale like so feeding into the, the oscillator um, but the oscillator is not always audible because there is randomly triggered, being triggered this um, AD with an attack and a decay. And there's a glide module to soften the signal um, afterwards. So let me show you this. This is the randomly triggered um, AD. And here you can already see um, a thing that it's, uh, which makes it necessary to use the glide. So if I increase this uh, uh, the probability of it being triggered we have we have more triggering now so here you can see um there are these um sharp edges here uh which are which uh, are being produced when um an envelope is not finished um, um uh, yet but still being but already being uh, re-triggered so we have a very sharp um uh um edge there which produces clicking in the audio um, because the, this is then being fed into the amplitude um, input here and produces a click. So that's the reason why there is an, a glide module in between. So let's see the signal after the glide module. And you see there is um, a smoothing out taking place. We lose some edges on the top here. It's not that sharp um, thing uh, anymore. And also here it's still, I mean, it's still going quite down and quite up but uh, it's not clicking that way. Um, already with a couple of milliseconds of smoothing, you don't get clicking anymore. Um, that's something to keep in mind. If you have click in your, clicking in your patches, you might want to um, use a glide module for the amplitude. So, um, and then to the delay module. Um, the delay module um, basically is... Um, yeah, it's a little, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a buffer. In computer terms, it's a ring buffer or um, in analog terms, uh, back then in the 70s, they have been made the, uh, produced these with uh, with a tape, with an actual magnetic tape that was running in loops. And you're writing onto the tape 
and after a certain time the this the written sound comes back in a repetition and um is being overwritten again so you have a constantly evolving um uh, loop uh, which is being recorded and played and if you yeah okay the t uh, the length of the of the tape you can control with the time setting here and with this preset dial for time ranges so um we have a full range short medium and long sub ranges so the full range goes from mo 1 millisecond up to um 12 seconds 12 and a half seconds where the sh uh, so there's a lot very very broad range of, of time which you can control here then from very low to, to higher um, the short range is from I think 1 to 50 milliseconds then medium goes to 50 to two and a half, uh, 50 milliseconds to two and a half seconds and then long is I think 250 milliseconds to the 12.5 seconds so um, if you want a more fine control, you can choose your range in the, in the um, um, you can pre-select the range and then your, the dial here is more responsive basically to your needs. So, but let's listen what happens when I change the time here. So if I decrease the time now more towards the uh, 50 milliseconds, you don't hear the individual echoes anymore. It's blending together more to some kind of chorus space or something like that. And there's a pitching. The, the, the existing tape is being sped up or slowed down in order to reach the desired time setting, the length. And that's why it's um, yeah being um, pitched up. Because if you, if you read something, play something more faster, like on a vinyl tape, a vinyl, vinyl disc, um, uh, then it's being uh, uh, pitched higher or, or lower. So this is getting shorter, so it's higher, and this is lower. And then the feedback setting here, if I remove this, then you don't have the repetitions. Um, I mean, you, you have the rep, it's, it's being played back once after the time with a delay, uh, but you don't have the, these echo, like dun, 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 getting, getting more quiet. So if I turn this back again, there's a multi multiplication basically per repetition. This is now up around 0 0.9. So it loses 10% of energy um, of amplitude each repetition. So it's not going to stay forever. It's going to go down the individual, individual notes. If I turn it up to 100, then it's it's completely reproducing each time, which may, which means that with new um, audio signals and energy coming in, this will get louder and louder over time. Um, if I turn this off now, then um, it's actually got, got quite loud. So if when I turn uh, this off now, it still keeps on reproducing itself because it's set to 100%. This will go on forever now. Um, and if I would be feeding more into the delay and keep on feeding it, this would be getting too loud. That would be a problem, and that can also happen quite quite quickly depending on your uh, loop settings. So be a bit careful with extreme settings here. But right now, this is basically behaving like the looper object that we discussed in an um, in an earlier um, tutorial. Um, so this is a loop now with layered. Um, it 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 receives some layers, so it's it's multiple repetitions could also be just one repetition and that's quite handy actually if you want more flexibility than the looper um, if you want the ability to uh, adjust the length of the looper more uh, freely if you want to pitch it up and down and so on create it, um, set the mixing dry wet mixing um, then the delay line is actually um, um, a quite good choice for you as well And then there is a dry mix wet, uh, a dry dry wet mix uh, dial, um, which I just mentioned. So this is the dry signal now. It's turned off here. Now it's back. So here you can hear the dry signal, and then this. If I turn down the feedback, there's a clear button. Let's hit that. Resets it to zero. And then, yeah, back to the initial settings. Sounds a bit different now, I think. We had maybe. Yeah, I go for full only wet mixing. All right, and this is being triggered quite often. That's the difference now. Wasn't so often.
Yeah, that's more. More like it. Okay. And that's it for tutorial number six.